Hi guys, Mary Beth Temple here. You might know me from my craft brand Hooked for Life or my cosplay team, TaylorMade Cosplay, but I'm here today on behalf of MasksNow.org. Now you can click on the links below to find out more about this wonderful organization and get patterns that you can make materials that medical facilities, some of them, actually need and get information on where to donate so that the work that you do is put to use and is not wasted. Now in this video, we're going to take a look at the N95 mask cover. This is not an N95 mask, but it is a cover for one. We understand that with the amount of lockdown and stay at home orders throughout your state, you may be unable to acquire the non-woven interfacing that we have been using in the regular mask pattern. This mask cover pattern is a great alternative. It is worn over a manufactured mask, which can be a major aid for the medical community. So we're going to take a look step-by-step step on how to create this N95 mask cover. And I also want to mention we do have ads on these videos, the masksnow.org videos that are hosted on my personal channel. The revenue from those ads, the bulk of it, is going to Masks Now to be dispersed at their discretion. So thanks so much for putting up with the ads and watching the videos. And let's take a look at the N95 mask cover. Now, the very first thing that you want to do is to print out your pattern and figure out the pages that have parts on them. So this is mask A2, we have mask A1, we have the ties, and we have the pleat template. And you're going to want to cut all of those out and tape A1 and A2 together to make one piece. But before you get to that point, I want you to take your piece that has A2 on it and measure where it says ref. That's reference, and it should be an inch. I'm going to take my little hem gauge up here and make sure that it's an inch. The reason that we're doing that is to make sure that the mask is absolutely the right size. Sometimes your printer goes crazy and does fit to page or changes stuff up, and you don't want to make masks that are not the right size. So double check first that everything is the way that it should be. Then you're gonna cut everything out. You're gonna cut along the black lines and along the red lines. And then I'm gonna show you how to tape A1 and A2 together. Now, here we are with our parts all cut out. So we have A1 and A2 that have red dots on them. And we have the two tie pieces that have red dots on them. So I wanna grab some scotch tape and I wanna push them up next to each other but I do not want them to overlap. There's no overlapping. You want the red lines to be right next to each other. So the paper butts up against the other piece. And then when they're exactly next to each other with no overlap, then you can tape. Now, if you have secured bias tape, you do not need to make the ties or cut the ties. You can use the bias tape instead. The ties are for when you don't have any bias tape because as many of you know, it's getting a little hard to find. So let me get some fabric out and we're gonna talk about getting this laid out on the fabric. Now we're going to want to cut two of these. So you can see what I did is I folded my fabric so that I had just enough room to cut two of them. We don't want to waste any more fabric than we have to. This is of course a fat quarter. You might be using yardage or old sheets or any old thing, but um, I wanted to make sure that I can get two out of this. So I'm gonna use my rotary cutter. You can use your scissors if you like, and I'm gonna cut out the mask. And then I'm going to use this side over here to make the ties. Now I'm gonna be 100% honest, I have made tie video for the other video for the three layer mask, so I'm gonna insert that right here. For this mask, I'm gonna go ahead and use bias tape. All right, I went with a different color for my ties just to make sure that the four ties matched at least. I know that people aren't being choosy, but 
I want stuff to look halfway decent, right? So following along the instructions, the first thing says with wrong side facing up, press a quarter inch fold on one end of the tie. So that's the first thing I did. Then it says fold the ties in half lengthwise, right sides out, wrong sides together, and press to create a crease. So there's my quarter inch fold, and I have pressed it in half. Then it says, for each tie, fold long size in, sides in so raw edges meet at the crease in the center. Refold on crease, resulting in a total width of about a half inch, and press. So I'm going to fold my raw edges to the crease and to the crease. So there are my raw edges on the crease. I can press that down and then I'm going to fold that in half and press it down. So my raw edges are here along the center crease. I'll neaten that up a little bit. I'm just kind of showing you the rough draft here on camera. I'm going to press that all down and then I'm going to sew across the short edge and down the long edge. So I'm just going to put that into my sewing machine and I'm going to sew as close to the edge as I can manage. So we're going to do that for all four ties. I did just want to take a second to point out that if you're using bias tape instead of having to cut ties, this part of the process is already done. So just fold the edge in your quarter inch, fold it so that the center crease is where it was. And you will notice on commercial bias tape that one side is slightly shorter than the other, and that's to make sure you get through both layers. So it's a great idea to sew it with the shorter layer towards you or up so that you're sure that you go through all the layers. I noticed when I did my ties, I didn't get it perfectly through all the layers all the time and I had to go back and add a little extra. So that's how you would do it with the bias tape. It is a lot faster, but I do know that it's hard to find right now. Now, before I unpin my pattern pieces, I want to mark the tie dots with chalk or maybe a wax crayon or frankly a pencil at this point. We just need to know where to put those ties later. So I'm using Taylor's chalk for that. And then we let's talk about this little guy up here. So they're going to be darts up here. So what I want to do is use the tip of my scissors and cut these notches out. You'll see why in a little bit. So I've cut the notches out. And then I'm going to mark that dot right there. So I know where that is. So now I have marked one of my pieces and I have marked that on the wrong side of the fabric. I'm going to peel that up and do the marks again on the right side of the fabric. And you'll notice when we make masks here for masksnow.org we like there to be the wrong side of the fabric showing on one side and the right side on the other. And the reason is you want people to be able to wear the mask consistently. You want them to be able to get the wrong side up against their face every single time. So it's easier if you have right side facing on one side and wrong side on the other. So I'm going to finish transferring my marks. Also, at this point in the game, if you want to mark the box pleat lines, you can do that now. Alternatively, you can use your pleat template to do it later in the process. I'm going to go ahead and do mine now while I have everything, have everything out flat. 
All right. Moving on with the instructions, it says fold piece one right side up and sew dart. So this is where it's tricky. It's the one that is the right side up, but it is the one where we marked the wrong side. <laughs> you need to be able to see those dots. So we're gonna fold it so it's lined up We're going to line up those notches and see there's my dot. So I'm going to sew the dart by starting at the notch and sewing until I get to the dart. That's all there is to that, and we are going to trim the dart. That was not the neatest backstitching I've ever done in my life, but it's really hard to sew with a camera in your way. And we're trimming that out because we don't need any excess. So it says we're going to open this out. And we're going to pin the ties into place. Now, once again, I gave you the video on how to make the ties, but I'm using some bias tape ties that I uh, sewed up the long side of earlier. We're going to, there's my dot. We're gonna put the tie right over the dot and pin it into place. We're gonna do that on all four dots. And then we're gonna tack stitch that real quick just to keep them in place. It's not the only thing that's gonna hold them into place. So normally I would pin all four and just machine baste all four. Now, if you wanna baste those by hand, that's totally fine. But I like to do everything by machine so it's faster. So I'm gonna pin the other three into place and baste them where they belong. Next, we have a photo with some squiggles on it. Basically what it's telling you is to hold this work, set it aside, but so all the s ties are in the center. Your raw edges are aligned on all four attachment points, but all your extra spaghetti is hanging out in the center of the piece. So we're gonna put that aside and then sew the dart into the other piece. Here's our second piece being held wrong side up, but it has the dot on the right side of the fabric because I'm gonna need it later. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna fold it so the notches match and the top edges align. And we're going to sew from the notch to the dot, which is right there. So again, you can pin this if you want. I've been sewing for Longer than many of you have been alive, so I tend to not pin. But let's see if I can uh, do a better job this time. That's much nicer. And again, I'm gonna trim that excess off because we do not need it. Okay, so here is piece one with the bias tape ties or the ties that you made, baste it into place. That's the picture on the instructions that looks like spaghetti. Then on top of that, we're going to put piece two, also right side up, one right on top of the other. And we're going to pin that so that we can sew most of the way around, we're gonna leave that top section open so we can turn it right side out. Notice, please, that you have the nice folded seamed side of the mask touching the nice folded seamed side of the mask. Once again, when you flip this, one of these will look wrong side out, but that is because you want the wrong side of the facing, uh, the wrong side of the fabric facing the back. All right, so I'm gonna pin this all the way around. I'm gonna leave this section open and I'm gonna sew on four sides, but leave that section open just like it shows in the picture.
Now I'm going to clip the corners because it reduces the bulk. And I'm going to do that and then I'm going to turn the whole thing right side out and I'm going to press it. And then I am going to top stitch around the turned piece. So I got my corners all clipped. Let's take a look at what that looks like after I turn it right side out. I'm going to just reach in through here and turn it right side out and all the ties are going to come out with it. Now I will say after I get it turned right side out, I use a little pointy something to neaten up those corners. Um, I can I use a knitting needle sometimes. I have an actual official point turner that I have. Just something pointy because you want to get into those corners and make them lay real flat because it makes it easier later when you are trying to uh, sew. So here we are. coming right side out and when I get over here to where nothing has been sewn yet I'm going to turn those seam allowances inside right there and I'm going to press that so after it's pressed I'm going to sew all the way around here we are all neatly pressed I'm going to top stitch all the way around All right, here is my pleat template. Um, I've noticed on the photo they have it on the outside, but I actually find it a little easier to mark if it's on the inside of the fabric. So I'm just going to go and mark all the dotted lines on this side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Again, I'm using Taylor's chalk. You can use whatever you have that works. And then, uh, again, something that's different on this one. I noticed that my chalk marks didn't really hold at the bottom, so I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to line the bottom up. So I'm going to line that up with the fold and I'm going to mark those as well. Oop, lost my chalk. Here we go. One there. I'm going to mark that fold. So I have one lined up at the fold, this guy lined up at the fold, this guy here. Now I'm going to pin the pleats in place and the bottom. So let's start. I like to go from the top down. I want to take the first mark, fold the fabric so it's right on top of the second mark. Press that pleat up. Third mark on top of the fourth mark. Press that pleat up. Fifth mark on top of the sixth mark. See how I'm lining the chalk lines up so they're touching. Press that pleat up towards the top and pin it. Now let's take a look right here. 
notice how the fold of the pleat lands right under the edge of the other pleat. That's uh, to make sure that you don't have 87 layers trying to go through your machine at once. So this is a little tough for a lot of machines to get through because the tie is right there. But um, otherwise I try and make it so, so the fold is under that fold because if it's here, that's a heck of a lot of fabric for most people's sewing machines to get through. So let's do it again on the other side. We're gonna take the first mark Line it up with the second mark, press the pleat up. Second mark with the third, or pardon me, third mark with the fourth mark. Press up. And again, I'm fudging it a little to make sure. I'll tell you what, when you make one of these, it's one thing. When you make 50 of them, <laughs> your fingers will start going on their own. But also you'll you'll discover that if you're off by, you know, a millimeter or a sixteenth of an inch, it's not such a big deal. Now I like to sort of pop it sideways to make sure they're lined up, which you can see that they are. Now what are we doing down here at the bottom? You're going to take this guy and line it up with the center line, sort of underneath. So here's one side. Here's the other side. See how I have them lined up? And I'm gonna press that to the outside and pin it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna take this line, line it up with that same center line. So you're gonna see what's gonna happen. Where's my guy? There we go. The folds are going to meet in the back. See how they're right next to each other, but they don't overlap? Okay, so now I'm going to sew all the way around the whole thing. So here is my completed N95 mask cover. Remember, this does not replace an N95 mask, but it will cover an existing one and hopefully make it last a little longer. We have our darts at the top to cover up by the nose. We have our ties. We have four ties. We have our box pleat at the bottom to give some depth. So again, when the, uh, oh, and then this is the wrong side of the fabric facing out, even though the seams are all covered correctly, so that when the person who wants to wear it picks it up, they know that this is the wrong side. This is the side that goes towards the mask, towards their face, and this is the side that faces the public. So that is our completed N95 mask cover. So I hope that that answered any question you might have about the pattern. Once again, please go to masksnow.org. Follow them on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. I'll give you all of those links below in the description. Please let the ad play at the end of this video because 90% of the ad revenue is going to them or a charity of their choice. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll get to them just as fast as I can. But thank you so much for all of your effort. Um, we can we can do things, you know what I mean? As individual sewists, this is something we can do. This is help that we can give. So thank you so much for all of your support. Masksnow.org.